Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody, I wanna welcome all you guys who are joining us for uh, the weekly uh, video. Okay, all our friends, again, all on major uh, social media platforms. Welcome, welcome. Hope everybody had a great trading week. Hope you guys are going to get some detox, some rest, some um, re-energized, good positive vibes so you can start a fresh new week obviously we are off on monday uh, observing the martin luther king uh holiday so hopefully everybody gets a good rest um so let's talk about the week right so this kind of v bottom formation uh is playing out right playing out nice and easy i'm joking obviously it's sarcasm um but the v bottom right that everybody calls the v bottom nobody knows it's actually a v bottom until well way after and the coolest thing about this, um, this, this feed, right? The coolest feed about this weekly feed is you see, if you go back week after week after week, the greatest part about technical analysis, and I always really try to drill the point home of technical analysis, how important it is. You can literally go back to last week's video and the week after week's video and the week after week's video, and you'll see exactly what my mindset was going into the following week and how important every single level was. So two weeks ago, it was an important level to recapture 157. And fast forward, right? Fast forward into last week, we talked about uh, how important it was and what will happen if we start testing this 50-day supply, right? Everybody was waiting for it. We talked about this last week, throughout the week. We knew there was a measured move uh, up to this area. And it was really, really refreshing how aggressive the bulls really reacted that whole week that every single sign saw a dip right above this 157 level the more we started building above it the more confidence you had that it was going to go to the next supply zone so again if you believe in the theory and the whole ps60 movement is behind stocks going from supply to supply demand to demand then you knew the measured move before any type of kind of reflection zone was going to be this 162 162.30 162.50 uh, area that we talked about. And I, I gotta give kudos to the bulls. Again, I, I, as everybody knows, if you following this broadcast, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm an opportunist, I trade technicals. It doesn't make a difference to me uh, what the stock does, it doesn't make a difference to me which way the stock does, which way the market flows, as long as we have, uh, and again, I, I use this phrase all the time, as long as we have a very, very clear collection of data that we can really get a good game plan uh, and allocate risk and really, really kind of try to remove as much risk as possible, then everything's validated. Um, so it was very, very important for the bulls to kind of not only test this 50-day moving average, but, well, kind of reclaim it. And we knew, if you if you went back to last week's video, we knew the initial move, and you could hear it in the first, like, five minutes of last week's video, um, we knew in the first attempt at the 50-day moving average that the bulls are going to get rejected. It's Again, it's a major moving average. Uh, everybody was lining up. All the technical sellers were lining up. All the tech, uh, emotional buyers were lining up uh, at this level, and it happened, right? It happened. Um, the bulls got rejected, okay? The initial rejection was from 162, I think it was 162.15, 62.20. It got there within 10 cents or so. They got rejected and the cues started coming in about 80 cents or so. So you could see it coming in. The great part about what we saw there, just strictly from the eye test, okay, was a lot of these names started getting stronger as the cues were getting weaker. And, and somebody asked me, um, I think it was a couple of days ago or yesterday, well, you know, if, 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 if you're correlate, like in other words, if I trade a lot of the NASDAQ 100 names, well, why don't I just trade the cues versus the individual name? And the whole point is individual names are much easier to control, okay? So for example, if the cues are trading, let's just say 57 million shares for the day, right? 57 million shares for the day, and Amazon is trading, for example, 
you know, 6 million shares of the day, you could see how easier it is to dissect the next probability move in Amazon versus a hundred stocks that are in the NASDAQ 100. You know, half of them are going to go up, half of them are going to go down. So you're not going to get that big aggressive move unless the whole tribe starts going in one direction. So we started seeing in the NASDAQ 100, uh, the day it tested the 50 day moving average, it started coming back in. And then we noticed, right? We noticed right away, Tesla got stronger. We'll talk about Tesla in a few minutes. Tesla got stronger, Nvidia got stronger, Netflix got stronger, Amazon got stronger. And right away you knew if they were gonna reclaim that level because they just weren't going down as the old adage says, whatever doesn't go down must go, right? So they got stronger midday and the best thing the Qs did was they reclaimed that 6220 level and the market erupted, right? Market erupted. And what happened throughout the rest of the week were a lot of perma bears, okay? A lot of perma bears that were not technically sound in understanding not only uh, sentiment, but they just didn't understand the, the, the clearest part of technical analysis. And what we started seeing throughout the week, every single time there was either um, some sort of gap down in the week or any type of weakness, the bulls kept on defending. If you notice here, just from your naked eye, you can see it. They kept on defending this 50-day moving average. That's the, the light blue line. They kept on defending it. And the more they kept on closing above it, right? They kept on building, building, and building. All these perma bears that just kept on coming out and just say, well, this market is going up because of X. This market's going up because of Y. Who cares? The scoreboard is the scoreboard. Nobody cares why the market is up, how it got there. Algo, Schmalgos, Unicorns, Bigfoot. Who cares? The last price is fair value. And the more you started seeing perma bears just completely, again, I don't even know if these guys are even shorting the market. They're talking about the market on the downside, but they're not, again, who's really shorting the market? Uh, again, if you didn't, if you missed this whole three month move that you're really shorting it up here, right? So they just didn't understand the technical aspect of what was about to happen, but they learned, they learned very, very aggressively. And the most impressive part about, in my opinion, about the week's kind of market sentiment, and we talk about market sentiment all the time, how to read which way the, the wind is gonna blow. Thursday night, okay, Thursday night, after a week of really, really strong earnings on, on banks, right? Banks did an incredible job, probably the best run uh, I've seen in banks in, in a couple of years, okay? Um, after a really, really aggressive move in the banks, it was now Netflix, right? It was now Netflix to take the stage to kind of kick off earnings for the beta names. And I'm telling you, you saw all these really, you know, really, aggressive traders come out and say, well, the stock just ran up 130 points, 150 points in the last three weeks. There's, there's no way it's the stock's going to go down. I mean, no way the stock's going to go up. And they were right. I mean, mentally, right? Technically, yes, of course, 130 point run. How do you expect the mark? How do you expect the stock to continue to go high, right? It could be the best stock in the world. Logically, common sense, right? That no matter what they said uh, on their earnings, the stock was going to go lower. Here was, here was the greatest part about reading market sentiment that, especially if you're a new trader, uh, you, you should really put it into your mental Rolodex. And when you, when you see it happening in the future, you can really kind of spot what's going to happen next. Netflix could have easily, okay, easily been down 70, 80 points, easily, okay? The earnings weren't, weren't really great. The subscriber growth, blah, blah, blah. Again, I really didn't read it. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's all about price action. I don't care what they say. I'm not investing in Netflix for the next 10 years. Um, but they had every excuse, every, even the bulls, even the bulls turn around and say, hey, okay, we get it. Okay, it, it has to rest. And the greatest thing that Netflix didn't do, okay, didn't do was blow up, okay? The fact that the stock was down 13, 14 points for the day, Two times in the day, the stock almost went green, okay? So that shows you how strong this short-term sentiment is, okay? They couldn't get down a stock that, number one, didn't have spectacular earnings, and number two, had this monster, monster run, uh, shares fully valued at these levels, blah, 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 blah. The most impressive part about what we saw was they couldn't get Netflix down. So if that wasn't, if that wasn't even, even more impressive as far as sentiment, the next morning you had Tesla, right? You had Tesla come out and turn around and say, blah, 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 blah. We're cutting 3000 jobs. The earnings might be, mm, right? You could have literally had between Netflix's headline and Tesla's headline, 
you could have literally had the NASDAQ futures. If this was three weeks ago, okay, when we were still escalating lower, if Netflix and, and Tesla would have had these headlines, the NASDAQ futures would have been down 200 points, okay? But this is how quickly the market sentiment changes. And I've been saying this for years and years and years, okay? The market is never as good as you think, and the market's never as bad as you think. There's always that area in the middle that the market gods are going to make you whole as long as you don't shoot yourself in the foot in the process, as long as you don't self-sabotage yourself in the process, that the market is going to make everything fair, okay? Fair. You might not take advantage of that fairness, and you might be blind to that fairness, but the market, I promise you, is not trying to trick you, okay? It's not. It's doing the same thing for generation to generation. You have to really accept technical analysis. You have to take responsibility. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, look, this is not working with what I'm doing. Maybe there's a better alternative. And again, I've been saying this for years. It doesn't have to be my way. Okay, who, who am I, right? I'm an idiot. I'm the king of the idiots. You don't have to trade pivots. You don't have to trade anything that I trade. But the most important thing is find something that you can validate that works, that works consistently. So the most important part of what we saw on Friday that didn't happen was not only the NASDAQ futures not down 100, 150 points, right? Because again, two prominent members of the QQQs, the futures were up and they were up aggressively, okay? And yada, 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 you had a 300 point rally. And, and again, you, you, know, you see all these, you know, you see all these uh, traders and I, I, I understand their frustration, okay? I, I, I get it, okay? I get it. When you don't have a valid process, okay, and you're just trading 25,000 random stocks and you're watching 20 different names that you've never heard of, that you never saw before, and you're trying to make uh, hay of those names, I get it. They're going to trade randomly. They're going to... Uh, they're going to have different personalities. You don't know what to expect. And that's why I, I trade, you know, 95% of the time, the same nine names throughout the week over and over again. If you see what I've been trading, you know, for the last, you know, primarily six years, realistically, same stocks, Tesla, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Alibaba, NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been a phenomenal trader, by the way. Um, Baidu, uh, Square, um, you know, Square, Google, and it's the same names over and over again, because again, it does represent less retail participation. Again, when you have less participation and more institutional participation, it's easier for them to bully the stock higher, okay? Uh, because again, there's less resistance. And the most important part is they're very, very predictable. Because again, the higher the price the stock goes, right? The higher the price the stock goes, you're going to have less retail. The lower the price the stock goes, you're going to have more retail. So for, for, for example, how many of you guys, right, are, are, are sitting at home and you, you're part of these quote unquote alert services that are trading $2 stocks? And, and every single one of these alert services have a thousand people in there, right? So again, the lower the price is, you can have more retail participation. So if you have 2,000, 3,000, 28,000, 88,000 traders trading the same $2 stock, trying to find for five cents, well, what do you think is going to happen, right? What do you think is going to happen? The pro problem is there is no direct correlation anymore. It's only how strong is your quote unquote uh, alert service, how many people can overwrite what you see in market sentiment. So it's incredibly important to just kind of figure out what you want to do, okay? Figure out what you want to do, figure out what's not working, and kind of move on, and just kind of move on. I know it's hard to cut bait of what you think has been normal. It's kind of hard to cut ties of something that you, you've been in for a very long time. It's like a bad marriage. You know, people are married 20, 30 years. Sometimes they hate each other, okay? But for some reason, they, they can't, you know, they can't cut ties because, you know, familiarity breeds contempt, okay? And again, it's so important, folks. And I'm telling you, if you're struggling, I don't care what you're trading, options, futures, pivots, schmivots, baseball cards, whatever the hell you're trading, okay? If it's not sitting there with you, okay? If it's not really providing enough value that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, well, what's the point, right? What's the point? Cut it off and go on to something new, which is very, very important. So Friday came, the weekend did big, big moves, like two and a half, three percent moves uh, all across the board. Very, very impressive. And now we're kind of getting into, again, another area. Again, keep this in mind, folks. We are still in a bear market rally. Again, why we say that? We're still under way supply, right? Until we get above, and again, we've been saying this for, for two months now, until we get above this 174 area and clear out supply and have this really, really big gap to fill, we're still in a bear market rally. Again, this is all supply. It has to clear out all supply, but glass half full, the bulls are doing a really, really good job. Now, here's our next reflection point uh, coming up here, right? You have the next area here, 
at 166.30. Okay, 166.30 is, what is this one now? 166.30 is the 100 day, right? 100 day. Again, not a lot of you guys use the 100 day. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But again, it's a real supply zone. So the next area of interest for the bears to kind of reclaim order, uh, orderly trading, at least on their side of the ledger, um, the market needs to test, the Qs need to test at 166.30. And again, we'll see what happens there. So if the bears can defend that level, We'll turn around, go lower. If the bulls continue to engulf every single uh, dip and start buying it back, then well, we're going to start chugging along. But again, the next measured move uh, for the Nasdaq 100 is this 166.30 level, and then at that point, uh, it will be another line in the sand for both bulls uh, and bears. A uh, very, very uh, a pretty good week, man. I mean, really, really good, solid week. Uh, Friday, I took a me day. Okay, and what that means is I was so tired. For all you guys who don't know, I'm um, watching this for the first time. Um, not only am I trading, sharing my screen, all that good stuff. Uh, the live webinar, I'm, I'm speaking seven days a week, live, I mean, talk the whole day, answering emails, speaking to traders. Again, the greatest part about the live webinar, it's all about, uh, it's all about trader development. It's the one-on-one -on -one personal relationship. I pretty much have it everybody uh, in the live webinar. Everybody pretty much has my phone number. Uh, we, we speak all the time because it's all about longevity. And that really wears on me, okay? at least wears on me. And, um, you know, Friday, I was just so burnt out. Like, I, I couldn't even look at the screen anymore. Um, I traded Tesla, okay? I traded Tesla, did, you know, did, did, did very well with Tesla. And then I, I took a me day, okay? I went to the sauna, uh, got myself lunch. I took a dip in the pool. I needed that mental refresher. And, and I, can't, I, I can't advocate enough how important it is, especially for what we do for a living, where it's so mentally intense that you need to be a better friend to yourself. I'm telling you as the day is long, you have to give yourself a little bit of a release, get a massage. That's the only thing I didn't do. I couldn't, I couldn't get an appointment. Um, but you have to be a better friend. You don't need to be down half a million dollars to figure out you're burnt out. You need a little bit of rest. And that's what I, I needed to do. I wanted to do, and I, I logged off. Uh, I logged off at lunchtime. Okay, I logged off at lunchtime. But the greatest part about these pivots are, okay, and I've said this for years and years and years. If, you, if you've been following this broadcast for years, nobody needs to be in the trade with you. That's the greatest part. These are organic order flow pivots. You don't need some twenty-year-old in a, an alert service to tell you to buy a two-dollar stock up nine hundred forty percent of the day to make ten cents. Okay, these are organic stocks. They're going to trade by institutional money flow. And once they confirm and the second entry gets confirmed again, okay, these things should work. So uh, here are the pivots. You know, here are the pivots for, for, um, for the day. I mean, again, we don't, we don't cherry pick. This is, you know, this is the morning, right? This is the morning here. Uh, this is the morning here. Uh, so, you know, this is the morning. Let's see what time here is seven. So at, at eight o'clock in the morning, again, just to kind of review of what, what, I, what I was seeing uh, pre, pre market. This morning basically is a case study of reading sentiment 101. Remove the obvious technical analysis that shows the building of levels, what we just discussed a few minutes ago. And I basically wrote, I go, Netflix, Tesla, sell offs this morning, and the queues are green. Okay. And all the other le levels break out. This is, this is called reading sentiment 101. Whatever doesn't go down must go up. And we started seeing, again, we started seeing um, stocks get stronger. Okay. At some point, Netflix went green on the day. And we talked about this level here, 253, 254. We'll need the strong build. If you're a new trader, obviously, I gave all the risk. Understand that you don't need to trade these things. Second entries are a must for confirmation. Uh, this never happened, right? This never happened. This obviously never uh, built, never even got close to there. And then we started talking about uh, Tesla. Tesla, the rejection level was at 329. Why was 329 important on Tesla? Because if you look at the 60 minute channel, right, this was the highest level it put in, right? Everybody see that? This is the highest level put in pre-market, so 329. So I said, if it could build above the 329, you might have a run to like 332, 333. Obviously this didn't happen. So again, we don't cherry pick. This is, this is what these levels are. And once they start confirming, they go. Uh, Amazon only went up like five or six points uh, from the 1711 level, went to 1716. And then we started seeing really, really aggressive uh, put buying coming in. And the one thing we started, I started really paying attention to this week and started using a, kind of like a confirmation, confirmation on my pivots are these beta you know, option flow. So we started seeing, for example, flow coming in in the morning, aggressive flow in the video over and over again, sweep after sweep after sweep. It's like giving you an extra confirmation that these pivots are going to work. And we started seeing pretty aggressive put buying coming in on Amazon on the February 1710s 
and the 1700 puts. And that's why the stock never went. It actually actually sold off. But here's where the day, I mean, really started getting aggressive. Uh, 154 build on NVIDIA. Okay, needs to build. And we just started seeing the 155 calls come in, the 160 calls come in, like really, really aggressively. And that's like the extra, extra, super duper uh, confirmation when, when aggressive smart money is coming on the same side of the trade as you. And uh, you can see in the video, just a huge move. I mean, really, really huge move. Uh, here is the 154 break, right? Here's the 154 pivot. Once it built and started, I mean, look at this move. I mean, huge, huge move. Congratulations for you guys uh, who took um, NVIDIA. Baidu, again, option calls over and over and over. They got as high as to like, I think I saw as high as the 185 calls being traded. And again, Baidu, uh, 171.40 needs to build. You can see Baidu. Uh, 171.40 was right here, right? 171.40 needs to build. Big, big move to like 175. Uh, Autodesk. I really like this setup. I didn't trade this one. The only reason I didn't trade this Autodesk, it was so damn thin. I love that chart. I was I was even talking about it at the pre, uh, pre-market uh, strategy session. I said, hey, man, if this was like Tesla, I'd be going in with 12 hands. I mean, it, it was such an awesome chart. It was just way too thin for me. And if you look at the setup here, uh, if you look at the setup here, on, I mean, figure out this candle here. Look how many times it got rejected on 50 day, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and finally just exploded through. Just again, unfortunately, again, sometimes liquidity plays a lot, uh, a, a really, really big part, of it, especially for me. Uh, unfortunately, I just can't get into these really thinner trades. But if you did, congratulations. Uh, team never got up there. Team kind of sold off right uh, sold off right from the word go, so never got there. Here was the, you know, here was here was the trade that I took, uh, and then after this, I just wanted to leave, man. I was just so burnt out. So Tesla put in the initial range of three twenty after the first move, three twenty seven twenty to the upside, three twenty to the downside. Early pivots to watch again. We don't care which way the stock confirms. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's all about order flow. It's all about directional bias after a confirmation. So for me, I was very, very happy buying it above, and I was very, very happy buy shorting it above. Again, I always trade Tesla, so no matter how I tire I am, I'm going to do it. So here is Tesla. Here is the trade on Tesla, and this was a pretty, pretty good trade. Um, this is a pretty good trade. So here was the 320, right? Everybody see this? 320 is the low of this candle, 320 is the low of this candle, and 327, uh, 327 was the high of this candle. So something had to give, right? Something had to give. And I the stock broke that 320 level, right? And again, we don't short it on the initial break of the pivot. We use something called a second entry. If you if you watch the the, the if you watch the workshop, we, we go over the four-hour workshop in nausea what the second entry is. And basically it's Letting the stock go through the pivot, establishing a new low, in this case, a new low. So it established a new low, I think it was like 1930s, right? I think we traded out to 1930s, spiked back up. And once it went through that 1930s, uh, I think pretty much everybody shorted the stock. And this thing just got murdered, went down to like 16, like really, like really, really aggressive move. Uh, so that was like my, my, my only trade. Of the, I, was just, I was just so mentally wiped out. Like I needed a me day. It was so... So important to to kind of get that refreshment uh, and re 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 energizing uh, into my soul. So beautiful move there. I mean, gorgeous move there. I was very very happy with it. Uh, and then things. And again, again, guys, again, we don't we're not cherry picking here. And and here's the most important part. So then you started seeing right before I left. You can see here at eleven fifty again. And I said three seventeen twenty now is to the upside and 314 down to the downside. And that's the ranges for the rest of the day. And this is where I logged off. I put in two pivots here. Uh, excuse me, I put in three pivots here for the rest of the day. Um, so 317.20 on Tesla, 314 to the downside. And this was, when I saw this, when I came out, you know, came out of uh, my, my, uh, my spa day, uh, here was what we talked about. So here was the pivot right here. Let me see what 314. Yeah, so here is it right here, 317 to the upside, uh, excuse me, 317 to the upside, 312, 314 to the downside, and this thing just got annihilated, went all the way down to 299, just absolute murders for all you guys who did catch it. Phenomenal trade. I mean, really, really phenomenal trade. Uh, then you had Netflix. Uh, I put this in right it also, uh, 341.14, if it builds below, it can flush. That was a sneaky pivot. On Netflix, uh, again, here's the 314. Uh, hold, hold, here it is. Here it is. Here's the candle right here. Again, the lowest candle into supply, which is right here. 
314, 341.14 area, went all the way down to 338. So good job there. Uh, Amazon doesn't look like it made it uh, back, but I, I still think Amazon goes higher. If we could just reclaim the 1706 area, uh, obviously this level never got triggered as well. And that's it. And that's it. And you can see the option flow. Uh, you can see the option flow from Friday's session. And you see um, the, the pivots that we have uh, lined up uh, for uh, Monday, at least uh, initially. So uh, good week. I mean, really, really good week. Um, I, again, I, 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 I can't emphasize enough, especially for you guys in the live webinar. We, we have so many of these transplants that used to be small cap traders, now to trading beta and just it's trading beta exclusively. And, and I'm telling you, uh, it's and I've said this for years, it's so much easier to control Tesla than control a random $2 stock that's up, you know, 830% for the day. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, until you really see how much control you actually have these things and how the RIS defined platform really reflects on your process, it, it's really, it's one of those misunderstood things until you actually see it you'll never really appreciate it. So again, if you're struggling, I mean, if you're struggling with doing what you're doing, there has to be a better way. And, and, and you know that. And I think it's self-reflection time. You have to look uh, in the mirror and say, how long can I continue doing what I'm doing until I'm completely uh, burnt out mentally or I'm completely have no more money left to trade? It, it's, it's again, it's self-reflection time. Nobody else can make these choices for you. Uh, you have to man up, you have to woman up, you have to adult up and you know make a conscious proactive decision to say, hey, do I really want to be uh, a professional trader? Do I want to do this for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, right? If not, you know, you'll do something else and there's nothing wrong with doing something else. But again, we're talking about trading. So again, it's reflection time. You have to make a choice. You have to make a proactive decision how you want to proceed with the rest of your career. So uh, going into uh, this week, uh, you know, I like, you know, look, I, I think you got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Uh, once it hits 166.30 on the queues, we'll obviously reevaluate. If we, we start seeing some stocks not participating in these rallies, obviously we'll start looking for this, these names breaking down on the 60 minute view. So let me give you guys some ideas that I do like. Um, you know, I, I like some of these Chinese names. Um, I like IQ. Um, I like Huya. Uh, pretty good, pretty good looking charts. Um, IQ looks good. It, it, it closed. It closed right above supply. If it could reclaim this uh, nineteen dollar area, I think the stock goes. Pretty good uh, option flow on this thing on Friday. Uh, Huya is pretty much the same thing for all you guys are trading non beta. Uh, I think it just needs to reclaim this uh, twenty one dollar area here. Um, I like eBay. I, eBay looks pretty good, man. I haven't traded eBay in a long time, but eBay looks great. I mean, first close. Uh, oversupply, uh, you know, close at the high of the day. So uh, you're either looking at this thing, either red to green for your aggressive traders or opening range, uh, 60 minute highs for a possible measured move to roughly this 32 area here. Um, what else do I like here? Um, I like this FISV. Uh, I think FISV looks good. Uh, first close, again, first cl big, big three day move, but first close oversupply. If it could reclaim $78, uh, I think the stock can go. Again, this is a free trade. And the reason why I say that is stock closed at $77.82. You're buying it through $78, right? So you're risking what, $0.20 cents if it comes back to red? You're risking $0.20 cents to possibly make $2. It's a free trade. Um, I like that. I like this. Uh, what's this other one I like? Um, I kind of like this Workday. Uh, I've traded Workday maybe a couple of times in my life. Um, let me look at the chart. It's pretty basic here. If it could just reclaim this uh, 173 area, the shot it gets to 176. Beautiful move. And Tesla, you know, here's the magic number on Tesla. Uh, again, for me, I traded it long this week. I traded short this week. It just doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, anybody who's telling me their opinion about Tesla, what's going to happen, you know, three weeks from now, you know, again, save your breath. I mean, honestly, does it, does it really matter what you think? Does it matter what I think? It's all about price action. The market's going to dictate eventually where the stock's going to be. Eventually, it's either going to be a 10,000 or it's going to be a zero, right? Right, social media? If you poll social media, next week, Tesla's either going to go to zero or it's going to go to 5,000. Please, enough with, the, enough with the, you know, enough with the theories, enough with the, you know, Tesla cues, enough with the Tesla's going to 1,000. Let the stock play out, okay? Let the stock play out. Let it dictate to you where it's going to go next, okay? Very, very simplistic case of technical analysis. And by the way, I'm the king of the idiots. And so if I don't know and I'm the king of the idiots, you're probably a guess as good as mine. So uh, again, technically, look, what can we do with this thing technically? Um, if it starts building below 299, right? Is there a trade? Absolutely. 
Uh, 299, I'm going to keep an eye on this. The macro number here will be 294. And if it gets 295, 299 build, it could get to new 294. If it breaks 294, it could get out to 84 and yada, yada, yada. But again, let's not put the, heart, uh, the cart in front of the horse. So I want to wish you guys an awesome three-day weekend. I'm telling you the day is long. Treat yourself. Be a better friend to yourself. Get some rest. Do some work. Obviously, do some work. But definitely, definitely get some rest and be a better friend to yourself. You will thank yourself for it. Guys, God bless you. I love you all. I'll see you all uh, on the field. Take care, guys.